So thanks for these podcasts. Your talks together have been entertaining and informative. Yeah. My fishing partner and I often listen to the newest episode while we drive to the river together. So it's 8.30 and I'm in Blackheath and I'm going to go to the fantastic bakehouse on Wentworth to grab a pie and then off to Thompson Creek Dam to fish. I've had a very stressful week of work and um, I'm going to head out to do some fishing to relax, to calm down. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, good. Yeah, this is truly a fantastic bakery. So, chicken and leek pie for lunch. That should be, that should be good. So, just two more cars in the car park at Thompson Creek. So it's my first time fishing Thompson Creek Dam this season. Uh, well, this year, I suppose, 2024. Um, just had such a tough week of work and I just thought I'd come out and clear my head. Uh, I'm not sure what the dam is fishing like. I know that the Sydney Fly Rodders, the club that I'm a member of, I know they had a club meet here about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I think they had 20 rods for two days fishing, you know, the whole weekend and nobody caught anything. Um, but, you know, I've got this beautiful uh, Scott G series, uh, six weight. Um, haven't caught a fish on it yet. So, uh, anyways, if nothing else, I'll just regard this as casting practice. Let's see how it goes. So I stand to be corrected, but I think I've heard this dam on the way to to the main Thompson Creek Dam, this sort of holding water, I, I've heard it referred to as Last Chance Dam or something. Um, I do think it has trout in it, although I've never, never fished it. On the Trout Bitten podcast, or one of the podcasts I listened to on the way up, they were talking about how you should be very observant on your way in to the stream or the lake. Um, yes, I just saw a dragonfly. So maybe, maybe they're going to be taking dragonflies. Who knows? But I haven't rigged up. Well, when I say I haven't rigged up, all I've done is I've put on an intermediate line or a reel with an intermediate line, um, a hatch iconic five plus, and I've got a floating line. Um, a rear gold floating line in my backpack. I'm, uh, I'm Robert, what's your name? Jared, mate. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you, Jared. So you say you've been here since daybreak and you've seen a few fish moving in the last uh, sort of 40 minutes. And then as I, as I said to you, when it's calm like this, I've always found this dam to be yeah, very tough. Very tough. Yeah. Very, very tough. Um, and I see your rig. You've got a, a glow bug, a glow, gub, glow bug up high and then down like a weighted nymph what about four feet below hey a weighted oh, nymph yeah yeah, that's what yeah. I'm working for me lately so okay good to know thank you yeah, no drama a few rolls in there i think actually you're right you know Your movement. that's something moving over there yeah last one i think i might i wonder if i should change to a floating line you're fishing a floating line, line yep. oh maybe i should just change over to a floating line yeah well those ones i've seen like in that last 45 minute period they've been very like very tight to the edge Wow. Sort of tighter than what they just rolled. So. I see. Okay, cool. Yep. Last right, one, mate. Jared. Thank you. Right, Speak to you soon. Definitely. Something moving there. Whatever it is, they look really small. There's at least five or six fish there, I think. Yes, yeah, so there's two fish there, small one and a big one. I've seen those. That's Hank and Vainant, his son. And they're uh, they're leaving, so that's the second car leaving. So I've actually unbelievably got this whole dam to myself. Oh, some nice looking little trout there. I don't know how to catch them, but there they are. Mm -hmm. 
So I started off prospecting with a with a streamer, a CDC jig head, like a hot head streamer. It's from Filling Filling Mill, but I'm going to actually now change to one called a Grizzly Mud Eye or Grizzly Dragonfly, and this is unweighted. This one's weighted. This is unweighted, but I can fish the unweighted because I'm fishing an intermediate line, six weight intermediate line. All right, we bit temperature check outside 17. And in the water, looks like it's 11 degrees. So it's lunchtime and not having any uh, joy. So I've changed uh, to a floating line. So a Rio Gold uh, six weight floating line uh, with a little um, Cat 3 uh, weighted nymph and then um, about a foot above it a dirty egg and then I'm trying something new from Fulling Mill which is a, a new style of strike indicator uh, I think it's called a bung B-U-N-G and it's a strike indicator that um, if the flies are heavy enough that sort of sits upright in the water so this is the smaller of the two versions uh, and these little um, it comes with these little rubber um, little rubber items that you can slip onto the your 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 leader and then you can control um, where it is that this strike indicator is you can control where it is the depth uh, so just trying something a little bit uh, new Jared Klein I went to a talk and he he recommended this new strike indicator Yes, I, I know you can't see that, but the little strike indicator is is flat on the water. So I think that means that either it's not deep enough, which is possible, in which case the flies are lying on the bottom, or the bottom nymph, the little Cat 3 nymph, is not heavy enough to bring up the bung. So I'm going to put a heavier nymph on and see if I can get it to, you know, to get a stiffy. This is what the filling mill bung pack mixed looks like and I got that from Brett and Sherry at BWC Flies. Okay so even this slightly larger Cat 3 nymph is not uh, heavy enough to get the bung uh, to get a stiffy so I'm going to swap out for an even larger one so I would think I've gone from a 18 maybe to a 16 and I'm now going to go for a 14 actually this looks more like a, actually this looks more like a 12 so let's uh, let's see if that's if that's heavy enough Okay, so that's worked. So a little bung. Boom. Little stiffy. For this foray to Thompson Creek Dam, I'm actually uh, trying a set of pant waders. So these are the Sims Freestone pant waders. So they just have a belt over here and a normal, normal zip. And then a couple of pockets. Um, I've got two trips planned in the next couple of months to some dams, one called Loch Leal, which I haven't fished before, and then another trip back up to Uncle Billy's. 
and I think it'll be really nice to fish in pants. Uh, and also, I keep falling in, so maybe these are uh, maybe these will keep me from doing too much aggressive wading. I think I've just seen a ras there. Going to the toilet in this in these waders wader pants so easy. So I've got this um, waterproof flap here, and then with a sort of like a non-waterproof zip. And then once you do that zip up, you've got these two clips and then the wading belt. It's very nice. Well, the dam is certainly living up to its nickname, Thousand Cast Dam, so far, but you know what, that's going to cheer me up. Chicken and leek pie, a bit of water. Happy days. I know the fish are here, but, but they're, not, they're not easy. Strangely enough, you... When it's very bright, it's actually quite hard, this dam. And when, when it's clear, when there's no wind, yeah. it's, see that there's a trout there. Oh, yeah. I can see it. Oh. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Beautiful, hey? I think it's gone. There's a trout there. This is Mimi and Sonny, who I've met here. Yeah. Hello. They're living in Lithgow. <laughs> and they've come here to trout fish. And we are so excited to see that beautiful fish there because we are battling a little bit. <laughs> well and truly defeated by this dam. It is very hard to fish when it is bright like it is now and there's no wind. Very, very difficult to fish. It's still very beautiful. Um, a lot of casting with the new Scott G series. Eight foot eight, six weight. Um, fished half the day with an intermediate line and then swapped to a floating. Um, really given it a good bash. Pulled streamers, nymphs, eggs, you name it. No joy. Whew. It's a very hard dam. View from the dam wall. Note that you're not allowed to fish off the dam wall, although if you walk along it, you'll often see very, very large trout. Also, mistake I made before, no wading in this dam. So for this adventure to Thompson Creek Dam, I fished my new Scott G series 8 foot 8 6 weight which is more of a medium action rod uh, and just re reflecting now on the fact that I've I fished it three times so once in a river and twice in dams P jar in here um, I, I would say that every day of the week for the type of fishing that I like to do in in dams the RL Winston Air 2 uh, nine foot six six weight that I've got um, that is a far far easier rod to cast and uh, indicator rigs with um, and I'm also I also find that with that rod I'm I'm getting far less tailing loops and uh, now that's a casting issue by me and I need to work on that and I'm actually going to go and um, to a casting lesson tomorrow uh, with the Sydney flower rod they've got a um, They've got a like, a like a world-class fly fishing instructor that um, provides his services for free once a month on a Sunday in Five Dock. Um, yeah, so so certainly for, from a lake perspective, um, that Winston um, I bought well first time. Of course, that's not what I bought this rod for. I, I bought this rod to fish the rivers of New Zealand uh, as an alternative to to the Air Two. Um, and I'm pretty sure it'll come into its own when I start to lighten, lighten the rig uh, that I cast with it, uh, lighter flies. Um, but yeah, for the moment, um, yeah, I wouldn't say that this is the best best rod for for lake fishing or the type of lake fishing that I like to do. In terms of my setup for lake, lake fishing, I'm really really enjoying this flyweight vest. So I've got my uh, my leaders up here, and my phone, and my spare batteries for the Osmo Action 4, and then 
uh, one fly box here, one fly box here, uh, a quail and shake over here. And then up in this top one, I've got the Weber temperature sensor and some uh, lip balm. And this is where my Garmin in reach would go, but I, I, I forgot it for this trip. Um, and then up at the top here on an Orvis Zinger, got the hatch nippers. And over here on a Loon um, Zinger, I've got my Trout Hunter. And that's, that, that Loon one is working much better than what I had it on before. I previously had it on a fish pond zinger and that, that was too loose. But the loon zinger is, is much more tight I suppose. And then a little mag pad here with my flies and on another zinger I've got some loon forceps uh, and a trash dash. So I'm very happy very happy with that setup. Very elegant. Thanks, Rudy. It was Rudy that put me onto this when I met him at the Ucombeen. It's hard to put my finger on why it's so much easier for me to cast um, a sort of like an indicator rig with the nine and a half foot six weight versus this eight, eight, eight foot eight. I think it, one of the things might be, I think the taller rod, you're less worried about your back cast catching up. I think that's a, that's an obvious one. I think everyone would agree with that. Um, so that's a benefit when you're fishing from the bank the, of, of, a, of a longer rod. But I also wonder if if maybe the whole idea of a medium action rod and me fishing dries to New Zealand trout that are slowly rising and sipping off the surface. I wonder if maybe my casting style is just better suited to a a faster action rod um, like the Air 2 um, and the Air 2 is by no means a fast action it's, it's not going to be like the the Scott Centric for example or probably a Sage R8 but it's certainly faster action than the G series maybe my casting style just it just suits it better not sure it's exciting lots lots to explore and dissect because um, they're both very good rods and it'd be nice to know when one shines and when the other shines. But for the moment, um, the Air 2 is, is by far a superior rod for lake fishing. Well, that would be seven hours of fishing for... Nothing. Zip. Zero. Blank. Skunked.